So I'm just making some gutta percha hand hammered golf balls. First step is to heat up the gutta percha in some boiling water. Now I'm going to try and divide this larger piece into a few smaller pieces. Okay, so I divided it into four pieces and then I'm going to heat each one and roll it into a ball. Well, that's the first one done. It's, um, I've hand rolled this into um, a rough ball. What I'm going to do afterwards is then I'm going to get out some weighing scales um, because I make mine about um, 43, 44 grams. Now the first one's come in at 51 on my very aged and worn scales, 51, 52. So I'm going to take a bit of material off it and then re-roll it into uh, a sphere. So it's now coming in at 44 grams and I'm going to roll it. So I've just done the first three and the fourth one's just heating up. And they're all about 43 grams. So one thing <clears throat> when making these balls, you've got to keep the ball moving because if not, you'll get something like that where it goes on a flat spot where it's effectively it's collapsed under its own weight. So let's try and get that one back into a sphere. Uh, a sphere I meant to say. Right. So this is I think really where the skill or a lot of the skill comes in in making these balls is actually getting them into a very good circular shape and it does take some time and some practice and some perseverance. Now once you've got a ball that's nice and round the thing you need to do is put it in some cold water so then it fixes the shape. one and this one needs a little bit of extra rolling. Now I tend to roll them in between both hands and as I'm holding the camera I can't do that and film at the same time. Right so I've just given that another good roll between the hands and I'm putting it in the water to cool. The other two are still cooking away merrily. Right, so this is ball number three. I've just rolled it. Just putting it in the water. It's still quite soft that one, so it's going to deform very easily, so I just have to be very gentle with it. I should explain at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these now cool uh, to room temperature and really harden up. Then I'm actually going to heat them again in the boiling water so that I can give them uh, a second rolling and then cool them down and then I'm going to heat them again and give them a third rolling and that's how I find that you get really good uh, spherical balls. So this is ball number one or two, one of the first two I put in the water. Now if I tap that you'll hear that it's actually cooled quite a lot. This is the fourth ball that's just come out of the boiling water and now I'm going to cool this one. It's a little bit smaller than the first three. So I've just put a few smaller pieces of the material back in boiling water because I need them to add to one, at least the, the small ball I'm going to make a little bit larger. So this was one of the first two balls I rolled and now it's going briefly into not boiling water but hot water and then I'm going to give it uh, an extra rolling. So, you just want it, so it just gets the skin, if you like, the outer skin soft. And this is what takes a bit of practice and experience just to feel when it's right. It's not going to go out of shape, but it's going to allow you to roll it some more. So here we go. And again, 
whilst I'm doing, I'm showing this on the, the top here, I actually prefer to do it with two hands. Right, so that ball now has had its second rolling and is getting into a very, very good shape. That's just some moisture there. So this is the second ball and it's just had its final rolling. And you can see my palm prints, uh, the ridges from my hands on the ball. And one thing that's just I have thought about before is the smooth gutters and hand hammers that exist. Maybe some of them have got the... Oh, somebody's just come in. That's my son. Some, maybe some of them have got the fingerprints of their original makers on them and maybe one day science will be able to scan these balls, maybe they can do it even now, and pick out the handprints or fingerprints on the hand hammered gutters and maybe on some of the painted outers of feather balls. That would be something uh, that I think um, one day will be absolutely possible if it isn't already. Right, so I now have four balls that are almost fully cooled. Um, that are in very good shape and now it's on to the hammering which is the fun part. Okay so I'm going to hammer up these balls now. Um, this is a an old metal cup shaped thing. It's not perfectly circular. Uh, it's got a bit of a dip in the bottom. That's why I don't use it for actually making the round balls but it serves very well for um, holding the ball whilst I hammer it. Well this video was done a bit ad hoc so I've not actually planned where and how I'm gonna stabilize this camera um, but anyway you can see you have the reverse view of my uh, garage in all its glory. So this is my little shoemaker's hammer I'm going to use with a sharpened bit here. First of all, what I've done is a ring around on one axis of lines. And now I'm going to turn it through 90 degrees and do another complete ring at the opposite uh, axis. Hopefully you can see that. I've got one going north-south and one going east-west and they cross on opposite sides. That sort of gives me the basic layout of what's called the foregun patterning and now I'm going to do a third axis There we are. So that's about half the surface area covered off with some kind of mark. And now it's a case of 
making up little grid squares um, around the ball. Two distinct poles now. So North Pole, South Pole, and then lines around all both poles. And what you tend to see on genuine hand hammered balls is they will have grids of roughly five or six squares, five strikes, uh, but, you know, to make the grid if you like of what's called the forgan patterning anyway. And there it is, covered. Now what I will do is I'll just go over it and see if there's any spaces where I can just fill in a couple of strikes or two, just to make it uh, nice and neat all over. That one's looking pretty good. So there we have it. That's the forgan patterning of a hand hammered ball. So this will now be painted with some enamel paint and I'll post some pictures on my Facebook page afterwards. If you've liked this video, please press the like button or subscribe and you can always contact me and my email address is info at timewarpgolf.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.